Hello and welcome back to Orologic. In the first part, we pitted these two watches against each other. We compared their dials, their finishings, their bracelets, and their clasps. Now, in part two, we will compare the looms, the movements, the accuracy, and then we'll conclude this video. So let's start with the loom video. All right, we have just killed lights. And as you can see, the Rolex, even though it's blue, looks more greenish than the almost totally blue of the Pagani design. However, the Rolex shines much more brightly, even at these initial stages. And we're going to leave these two for a few minutes to see how it evolves. All right, a few minutes later, we can see that the Rolex is still shining in there a bit less brightly, but really visible. The Pagani design, uh, it's still hanging in there, but yeah, not for a long time. Let's talk movements now. And this is the part where the Rolex shows to be in a whole different universe from the Pagani design. Both have automatic hand winding and hacking GMT movements. Let's start with the Pagani design. The Pagani design is using the Pearl DG5833 GMT. It hacks and it hand winds and it has, of course, a GMT functionality. And I will show you how this GMT works. I have unscrewed the crown here. First position, you wind to watch. A bit gritty, but nothing too bad. Second position, you change the dates when moving clockwise. And when moving counterclockwise, you freely move the GMT hand. As you can see, it's not like the ETA movements where it goes hour to hour. Here you can freely move it at any time you want which is both a good and a bad thing. A good thing because just in case you are in those countries where, the, where, where there's half hours, a true GMT will not cut it. But here you can really precisely set the GMT hand to any hour you want precisely. Third position, hacking, the Rolex now. The movement is the 3285, it has a triple lock, stated by those three points on the crown and by that gasket in there. Rolex conservatively says that this is a hundred meter water resistant, but with the case and with that crown, I really believe you can do some shallow diving with this one, no problem. If ever you want to take such a risk with such an expensive watch. All right, as I was saying, first position winding, Winding is really good, really smooth yet resistant. Second position, you can move the hour hand. There's no actual quick position for a quick set date. The way you do the quick set date here, as you can see, as I turn clockwise, the hour hand jumps, which means that if I land in a place that is four hours ahead of mine, I just go one, two, three, four, and that's done. And that is both ways. Okay, if I land in a country that is four hours behind mine, one, two, three, four. And there is no actual quick set date on this one, mm -hmm. but you just move the hand as you move the hour hand, as you can see, two movements of the hour hand make the date go forward and backwards. You can do it also backwards. That is really cool according to me, guys. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. You often annoy us, but those numbers speak for themselves. Those are really impressive. And that is where part of your money goes in ensuring that these movements are pretty much always spot on. Okay, and that is not terrible from the Pagani design, but it's not good either. All right, it went down to plus 11, but it was showing plus 16 most of the time with a pretty high beat air. And we'll conclude by saying that, of course, Rolex 
is a much, much, much better watch than the Pagani design. But is it understandable that this watch costs 200 times as much as this one? No, it isn't. A lot of that is due to Rolex hype, of course, which inflates price. A lot of that is due to the cost of labor in each of the countries in which these watches are made. And a lot of that is sadly due to hype. The Rolex is an extremely hype watch, which has allowed these, these homage brands to surface and to be quite successful, especially in the latest years. We could debate a lot about whether Rolex is worth what it's worth and whether Pagani design is also worth what it's worth. I've made individual videos on those if you want to check them out. I will leave them on a little card here and on the description below. But the bottom line is these guys. Wear whatever you want. These are both my watches and I wear them proudly. I remember that in my early days of collecting, before I wanted to commit to spend such a large amount of money on a Rolex, I bought a Parnis GMT to know if I wanted, if I was okay with the feeling of the Rolex GMT. And that made me go through and say, okay, yes, I do want to get on the queue for three and a half years later, get the GMT too. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Uh, in any case, there is room in this market for both these watches and that is important to know. All right, so that is it from me. In the coming reviews, we are going to be comparing this one and we'll go crescendo. I would love to compare this one with the Saint Martin GMT. And you know me, Saint Martin is one of my favorite brands out of China. I believe their quality is amazing and I am really dying to compare this one with the Saint Martin GMT because there it will get a bit more serious. So thank you guys again for having watched the video. Don't hesitate to leave your questions and your comments and of course to subscribe to the channel and I'll be seeing you very soon on a future video. Goodbye.